Hi and welcome to another video by Get It Done Home Repairs. Today's project is we're going to be replacing this light switch with a new one. And the reason we're changing it is because this light switch here is the one that illuminates in the, at nighttime so you can see it. Sometimes it lights up, sometimes it don't, so we know that something's going on inside the switch. So we're going to be replacing it with a new one. All right, now the power here, just so you know, I turned the power off already in the circuit breaker box outside. Even though you see this light right here, the power is off on this particular switch. Now I just want to show you what kind of tools we're going to need and how this light is actually still on when we have the power the rest of the house off. Okay, so here's an example of the tools we're going to need to get this job done. We may need a pair of wire strippers, possibly, we don't know until we get in there. We may need a needle nose pair of pliers like this. We need a flathead as well as a uh, Phillips head screwdriver. We may need a utility knife. We have a non-contact voltage tester, but I already know the power is turned off because I turned it off in the circuit breaker box. We have a light in case we need to see inside while we're working and possibly some electrical tape, but we'll see how that goes as we work on it. Now you're probably wondering, how is this light here lit? And the way that we have it lit is it's not plugged into a regular household outlet, it's plugged into this box. Okay, and here is how we do it. When we turn the power supply off in the house, we need to have lights so we can see what we're doing. And the way that we can see what we're doing is we have this unit here. And this one is produced by a company called Up Ud Power. And this unit here is called a C500, which is one of their smaller units, but it actually works really well for the projects that I'm doing here. As you can see, you can charge multiple devices through here. You can charge up a, uh, through a USB. Uh, and any other kind of unit itself right here. Uh, it does have a uh, eco mode right here. We can charge the unit by plugging it into a regular household outlet, a regular um, outlet at home. But what I like about it is that if you press this here, you can see how much charge is in the battery pack itself. It's 98%. And we have 48 watts being used right now. And the 48 watts is because I have a very bright light that I'm using. And it'll run for 4.5 hours on this, partic this particular light. We run on here for 4.5 hours. It has multiple outlets, so you can have additional power sources as well. And this will come in extremely handy if you were to have a power outage and you lose power in your house. At least you'll have some lights and you can see what's going on without having to pull out a generator, start it up, and then have to deal with running a cable into your home or the fumes from a generator. This also has lights right here as well. And you press it, and you can see it has lights on there as well. It has three different levels of lights. You have high, low, and medium. That's the highest right now. And as you can see, now it's drawing 50 watts of power because we're using these lights here as well. And it has an eco mode. I don't know if I told you that, but it has an eco mode. And you can also charge it from multiple sources. You can charge it by charging it in a uh, in your home, or you can even have it charged in your automobile, or you can even connect it up to a solar panel. All right, but uh, that's how I do it. I hear it all the time. It's like, how do you work without the power being on? And that's how we do it. All right, let's put that switch in, and let's wrap this job up. We're going to take out these screws that hold it in here. We're going to take these out. These both are Phillips head screws, just so you know. Okay, we'll take the two screws out just like this. Now, if this cover was stuck to the wall here, you, that's when you would take your utility knife and you would strike along here and cut the paint line around here but I can feel it already. This is not sticking at all, so we're not going to have to worry about that, but you may need to do that. All right, so let's put this down and out of the way. Next, we're going to remove this switch right here, and there's only two screws right here that we need to take out so we can pull it out. All right, now you can use either a Phillips or you can use a flathead. I chose to use a Phillips on this one. Take that screw out. Take this screw out. And now the outlet is removed. 
we're just going to pull it out just like this. Okay, so we're going to take these two wires out right here. Now, it's just personally the way I do things. If I take it off on the bottom, I make sure I put it back on on the bottom. You don't want to reverse them. Not that it's going to be a big deal, but that just happens to be the way I do it. So we're going to loosen up the screw on the bottom first. It's counterclockwise to take it out. We're going to do the same thing on this one right here. And then we'll take these two wires off right here. Sometimes it comes in handy having needle nose wires. Because you can hold the wire and just pull it off like that. Okay, next we're going to come around to our ground screw right here and we're going to remove the screw for the ground wire. And then we'll just take this off, just like that. Okay, this is now trash. Let's grab our new switch and we're going to put the new one back in. I want to point this out, before we put the new switch in, make sure that you have it set the correct way. The name of the switch itself is in the upright position, of course, so that way you know that it's put in the correct way. On the switch itself, it usually will say top on the switch itself. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take this, we're going to take our ground wire, we're going to reconnect our ground wire first, and it's going right onto that green colored screw right there. Now we have the screw and we're going to turn it in a clockwise position, so you want to make sure that when you put the wire on like that, that you wrap it around in a clockwise position like that. So now when you tighten it, it pulls the wire in tighter instead of opening it up. Okay, our ground wire is tight. We're going to look to make sure it says top right here. And also the name of the switch is facing up. We're going to take this now. We're going to take our switch, take our wires and put them back on as we took them off before. We're going to turn it so that the loop of the wire itself tightens up as we rotate the switch, the screw, in a clockwise position. Like that. And we're just going to crimp that wire a little bit tighter. I'll tighten it and then I'll show you what I mean. See how the wire is nice and tight around here? And we'll do the exact same thing on this one here. And then we're going to crimp it again. So that the wire is tighter. Just like that. Now we'll grab our screwdriver and we'll tighten down the screws. Nice and tight. Do the exact same thing on this one. Okay, you can see that both of them are tight. The wire is now held in to that little spot right there where the wire goes in. Same thing on this one here. And now we'll take it and we'll put the switch back into the wall. We're just going to fold these wires in a little bit, just like that. And now we're going to catch these screws into the box that's in the wall. And then before you tighten it down, we'll catch the one screw and then we'll get the second one in like that. And now we'll screw it down just till these pieces touch the wall itself. And 
All right, let's get our cover. Let's put our cover back on and we'll finish this off. Okay, we'll put our cover on like that. Before you tighten one screw, make sure you have both of them caught. It's a lot easier instead of tightening one and trying to fish around to get the other one in. Screw it in like that. We'll screw this one in like that. Okay. All right, let's go turn our circuit breaker on and make sure our light works. Okay, so our light switch is, is now totally installed. We turned our circuit breaker back on. You can see that there's a slight glow behind here, so that way at night you'll know where it is when it's dark. But most importantly is let's make sure that it works. As you can see, it works perfectly. All right, so as you can see, replacing the light switch is really not that difficult. Just make sure that you have your power supply turned off. That way you don't get a shock when you're working on it. But that's it. This job is finished, and we're on to the next one. All right, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.